right, or that it's like 90 degrees, and you see smoke around, it looks like a fire. It actually looks like fire, and the temperature of the room really rises up. So the thing that I'm trying to emphasize is that things happen around a demoniac that are completely unnatural, super strength, apparent okay. vulnerability, the putrid spell, smells, you know, sulfur, brimstone, flesh decomposing, feces, um, the ability for them to flex and move their body in unnatural ways. I mean, they could, you know, like, this is when I was a kid, and all of a sudden he's, like, like bent over backwards, and, and contortionists can do that. But this, you know, this yeah. all signs point in. And then the ability to have uh, uh, hidden knowledge. One of the things that I notice a lot is when I'm talking to these people, um, it's, it feels like I'm being surrounded, like the room is being surrounded by all of these, like, nasty creatures, like, like wolves or hounds, but evil. And when I'm talking to them, they're not just talking to me in their voice. They're talking to me in three different voices at the same time. In other words, three voices are coming out of them right. at the same time. And sometimes it's in a foreign language. Uh, my last case, a little girl was talking in German and, and Latin, I believe. And sometimes they speak backwards. I mean, you could, like... If I okay. Okay. Now, now the girl that's speaking in German and Latin, she has no knowledge no. of this, right? Just to make a point, just to. She comes from a, a Spanish family, so her language would be Spanish and English. Yes. And yes. Like holy cow! And she's saying things, giving clues to who her identity, the the demon's identity, in German. It's like holy cow! What what's that all about? You know, and then and levitation, that's real. The ability to walk up walls, like the, uh, the, the, the Ammon case, the boy, the boy uh, walked up the wall, apparently, you know, backwards. The ability to bilocate, which means it's actually split up into different, two different bodies, which happened uh, with the Maurice Thoreau case, Frenchy. You know, he actually, people, witnesses, credible witnesses, saw him plowing... You know, plowing the, he was a farmer, plowing the fields, and also being in the kitchen at the same time. And one of them wasn't him. One of them was a demon imitating him. So that, that's another thing. Um, uh, Jack, Jack's supposition of the, the spirit's physicality from the demon, right. demoniac and the physical transfiguration of the demoniac spatial features. In other words, the person doesn't look like themselves anymore. A little girl doesn't look like a little girl anymore. She looks maybe like she's a 98-year-old hag. You know, the, you know PK, that, that's psychokinetic energy, poltergeist activity, um, that happens. The ability, the seeming ability to read it on the person. Okay, mind. so so with that said, do, yeah. doesn't the little girl get sick ap afterwards? Do, do, doesn't, there's a lot of strain going on within the body, correct? Correct. Everybody that is exposed to this, the entire family, but especially the, the demoniac, is stressed. Their body is like bur literally burning up because it's, a, it's an unnatural... To be around a demon is an unnatural physical experience. When you're around a demon, and I, I hate these people that say, oh, I'd like to see a demon, or let me... Let me, can I come to your house and we can see demons and we can demon hunt? It's like, no, you do not get it. You do not want to be exposed to demons because when you're exposed to demons, you get sick. You get, quote, bad luck, quote, unquote. You get malfunction. You, you, your world disintegrates around you. Everything that could go wrong in your life goes wrong when you're exposed to a demon, period. Okay, now when people say uh, they... <laughs> How do you explain these? I mean, you have your group. Why isn't why? What I'm trying to say is why isn't it that that more people don't know about this, which they should? What is stopping the uh, pe to ed educate people about the a afterlife, about de demons, and what they could do to pe pe people? Why? 
Why is it so quiet? There's a couple of reasons. One is we have, since the 17th century, moved from into a situation where everything is so-called explained by science. And mm-hmm. science is absolutely a valuable way to, to experience life because it, it, it explains some of the things in, in terms that we can, exp- we can understand. You know, gravity wor- does this, you can measure it. Light does that, and you can see it, et cetera, et cetera. Now, people, so we moved from a dark age where everything was magic, everything was demons, to an area where if you get sick, it's not a witch casting a spell on you. It's that you didn't wash your hands and you got an infection or you got, you know, a cold, a flu or something. So in a way, that's good because I don't want everything to be blamed on demons. Um, the second reason is demons' yeah. greatest greatest ability is their uh, the greatest I don't know how to say this but their greatest ally is the fact that um, people don't believe in them anymore and I can I can cite cases where Roman Catholic priests can look you in the eye and say Al. I don't believe in angels, and I don't believe in demons. Yeah, there are some I've talked to that have said that to me. Yes, yes. And then I wonder, wonder, I don't, I think they're so close minded or afraid of it. What do you think? They're they're afraid of it. They're not taught it in seminary school in a lot of cases because some of the popes didn't emphasize that. Um, um, and, And they see it almost like a superstition, where they don't want to go back to that time. They see themselves almost as social justice warriors, right. rather than, you know, or humanists, rather than someone that actually knows that even though these things are rare, they happen, and they're happening, and this is a bad thing, they are happening on a geometric level. They, um, Malachi Martin, I've mentioned his name many, many times so far in this program, <clears throat> great exorcist. Um, he said that when he first started off, there were only maybe a few cases of, of demonic possessions every year, but that it was increasing. Now, he died in 1999. Okay. When he died in 1999, he said, wow, it's starting to, it's starting to have an out, it's, it's, it's almost epidemic. Okay, when I, in 2010, I might have, I might have two or three demonic cases a year, legitimate cases. Now, I have two or three a week. I can't keep up with it. I cannot keep up with it, and I can't train. I can't train demonologists fast enough, and the church can't train exorcists fast enough to keep up with all of this. Okay, and and, and you don't charge. You do not charge. This I, is. I have never charged. Yep. I do not charge. I do not ask for donations. No. Nope. Do not ask for travel expenses or suggest uh, nothing, period. Because this is a calling from God. Yes. And I, I, I am one of these people that have been chosen to do this, and I can't charge for this. I cannot right. actually charge this. And it's costing me hundreds of dollars, sometimes a week, to try to help these people. And it's like, I don't have a hundred extra dollars because i got to take off from work. I gotta, you know, travel places. I don't charge them, you know, not, not even a meal. I don't even ask for a glass of water when I get there. It's like, well, can can I ask then? How, how how do you do you get these expenses back within your other jobs or or how to just at a, I mean, God okay. always provides for us. I know that, and you know right. that. The way I do it is, I have a nine to five job. Okay. <laughs> some, other, uh, some other people like. Uh, uh, John Zaffis does it because he was an engineer, uh, and now he writes books and he does lectures, and that's oh, why. Oh, okay, okay. Ed Warren did the college circuit, and Lorraine Warren did college circuit, and they got paid for the colleges. You know, so, after the book. so you know, I mean, in order to do this, you got to give yourself to- totally to God, like like you said, and it, it takes it takes a lot of sacrifice on your half. And 
I guess what I'm trying to say here is dealing with, with demons, the de- devil is, is not to be taken light, light, lightly. We're ta- talking about as your, your life. I mean, in one of your videos, you talk about uh, how everybody is, uh, is, can be possessed. Is that correct? Rephrase that again. So I uh, okay, I'm sorry. You, you were saying in one of your vid- videos how everyone could be acceptable to a possession. Everyone has the potential to being possessed. Okay. Even Mother Teresa was possessed. With all the stuff that she was doing, yeah. I And they always go after the good people. Pe- pe- yeah. So, you know, if they, they'll go after an eight-year-old kid, they'll go after a priest, they'll go after a nun, they'll go after a, a prostitute, it doesn't matter. Well, so, what do you, okay, what do you say to people, what would you say to people if somebody did feel that they got possessed, what would you tell them on how to get help or, or start, how can they help themselves, by praying or what would you suggest? First of all, Many people are good people, right? Right. But when you're in this situation, you can't just be a good person. You have to be an exceptional person to fight it. Okay. Okay, so it's not, you know, a lot of these times, every time I go into a situation, I go to the person and say, do you have a religious belief or a spiritual belief? And they almost always, they say yes. Sometimes they say no, and it's like basically I, I roll my eyes back in my head. Like, <laughs> Jeez. Like, you know? but, uh, like you're possessed and you don't believe in God or the devil, but hey, you're you're possessed. Okay, now I, now I, we have a problem. <laughs> I, I went to I had a client who was a Jewish lady, and she was an atheist, and it's like okay, you you're Jewish. You just said you're Jewish. Go to the temple and pray. No, I don't want to do that. I feel uncomfortable. Okay. Go to your, the rabbi and ask him to help you. No, I don't really agree with that stuff. And it's like, what do you want me to do? With, you know, it's like, <laughs> I, things I could do. I could pray on her behalf. I could go into a situation and prove that it may not have been really a, a metaphysical problem, a preternatural problem. I could have showed that maybe, you know, the gas was leaking, carbon monoxide making her feel this way. Oh. But, I mean... Okay, you 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 talk about people being possessed, but you even know of a case where a person made a deal with a demon when they were in jail. Could you tell us about that? When they were in jail? Yeah, they made a a, a deal with the uh, with the devil or a de- demon to keep them safe when they were in jail. Oh, that happens all the time. Now I don't remember me saying that. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe I heard it. <laughs> it happens a lot. I mean, you go to jail, and basically, it's basically you are the next person that everyone's going to try to sodomize, pretty yeah. much, if you're a guy. Right? Or right, if you're, right. You know, you, you're someone's, quote, bitch. You know, it's like... So no, no, you, thank you. No, I'm not going to have been over for that, so, no. Exactly. So, uh, so, uh, and... You, you didn't see me, but it was, like, very hard for me to say that word because <laughs> I don't get the curse. But anyway, um, um, when you're in a, a situation like that, if you're not, like, you know, tra- uh, if you're not, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger belt, it's, you're, you're anybody's game, pretty much. Yeah. So uh, these inmates basically turn, they, they turn away from God, or maybe they try it for a while, you know, Jesus, please help me. And for whatever reason, because, you know, I'm not, no one can understand how God works, period. So, for whatever reason, God doesn't appear to them and say, I'm going to save you, right? Now, that's right. kind of funny to me, because if you really pray really well, St. Michael, the Archangel, for example, has always helped me. But some people obviously don't get the results they want when they need it. Okay, so they turn to the devil, they turn to Satan, they turn to Lucifer, and okay. Lucifer will actually protect them. But there's always, always 
always a price to be paid for it. And, you know, 